Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome, 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 welcome into the house of the Lord this morning. We come and give him praise. We come and give him honor. We come and give him glory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Welcome, everyone, to our worship experience here at the Progressive Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. 282 Progressive Way. We come today in power. We come today in majesty and in honor to our great, great God. Our call to worship today from the book of Psalms, chapter 95, verses 1 through 6. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great. It is a great God, rather, and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our God. with us. great is our God. It's prayer time now that we can come and bring all of our cares to the Lord. We want God to have his way in this service. Whatever you need him to do, I ask you to bring him before, before him this morning. 
and he will answer. Father in heaven, we thank you today for this opportunity. We can come and praise you. We thank you right now for the power of the Spirit today. We ask you if you come to bless this service in Jesus' name. Bless your word that it comes forth. To help us to understand that we are on the Lord's side and he will take good care of us. We ask you right now, Lord Jesus, to bless those who are sick and shutting, those who need miracles today. Bless our nation as we continue to deal with this virus. Lord, we're in your care. We ask you to right now in the name of Jesus to protect us. Protect our children at school. And right now we just ask you if you would just let love abide. Let love abide in Jesus' name. Lord, we just need you right now. I need Thee, oh, I need thee. Would you say it with us? Every hour I need thee. As you pray this morning, oh, bless me now, my sin. Come on and say, I come, I Lord, bless your people right now. Deliver them if you would. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm 
you brought me, how you brought me through the night. See, Lord, you kept me and you never left me. by way of Facebook Live and you, YouTube at 12. We thank God for your presence here this morning. I'm happy to be in the presence of the Lord. and I'm happy to be alive and well. So many can't say that this morning. So let's give God some praise right now for his blessing. <laughs> in the name of the 
Lord Jesus. This week, a uh, song that our Deacon Hamilton made famous here at Progressive Church, Who is on the Lord's Side? And as I begin to ponder the theme of that song, let us to the book of Exodus in chapter 32. Verse 26. And it reads Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. The text that we want to use for background, and you can read this at your leisure. St. John chapter 6, verses 51 through 71. Read it because we can understand clearly better why we need to be on the Lord's side. In that sixth chapter of the book of St. John, and at the beginning of that chapter, Jesus had taken five small loaves of bread and two fish, and he fed 5,000 men, plus thousands more of women and children. Also in that text, we find that the Lord Jesus worked two amazing miracles to cross over the Sea of Galilee. The first, he walked on the water about three miles to catch up with his disciples in the boat. And then as soon as Jesus got in the boat, he instantly transported it to Capernaum on the other side of the lake. Some of the people who were with him, he fed, had fed, he caught up with them the next day. And they were highly interested in getting a supply of free bread. But Jesus used the occasion to point out a reason to be on the Lord's side is not so much for natural bread, but for spiritual bread. And in that 32nd verse of the 6th chapter of St. John, Jesus began to say to them these words, My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I want you to just, just focus on that. To be on the Lord's side today, you have to have had some of that life-changing bread. Verse 34 tells us the Lord gave us this bread always. And in th- verse 35, he said, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. Now, you would say, what, what does this have to do with being on the Lord's side? Jesus said unto them that he was trying to teach them an essential truth that I want to share with you this morning. That he is the bread of life. He is the one that can provide for us. The message this morning is who is on the Lord's side? It is one of the best known questions in the Old Testament. It is a question that Moses asked the children of Israel asked after they had rebelled against God and began to worship that old idol of gold. You got to be very, very careful what idols you worship today. Amen. If you're on the Lord's side, you got to serve him in spirit and in truth. The first thing that we must understand about this this text this morning and this message is I want to ask you the question. Are you on the Lord's side? And first, we must, first of all, to be on the Lord's side, you must not go back and must not back away from the Lord Jesus Christ. As I was thinking about this, it is almost 14, 15, 16, almost 18 months now. 
we have not been able to worship as a church in the confines of a building. And in my spirit, I find that many are drifting away. Your fire for God is not what it used to be prior to the coronavirus. Other things have taken the place of that fire now that used to burn when we were inside the walls of this building. And it causes me great concern. And the Lord just spoke to me, tell them who is on the Lord's side. Amen. The building is not God. The fellowship is wonderful, but it's not God. You must understand today, as I have to understand, that God is who he is no matter where we may be. And we must not back away, the first point today, we must not back away from God. We must not turn away from following the Lord. Many are not reading the Bibles as we used to. Many are not fasting as we used to do. Many are not praying as we is. We have found other things because we feel like we need to be together. Now, fellowship is important, and God is saying that is important. But your salvation is not dependent upon simply just fellowship. Your salvation is understandably connected with the bread of life that comes through the word of God. And many people during Jesus' day, just as it was in Moses' day, they turned their back away from God. The God that brought them out of uh, Egypt. The God that took him through the uh, uh, wilderness and the God that blessed him to go into the promised land after all he had done for them, many fell back. And so it is today. God has blessed many of us who are watching, but many of us are drifting, drifting away. And why I say that this morning, we don't want to make this fatal mistake because, because when God speaks to us sometimes, it offends us. Amen. He told them as he was teaching here to a, cru a crucial point that they were only concerned about the natural bread of life. He says, I am the light. I am the bread of life. He was saying what he was saying. I am the bread of life for your spiritual well-being. Amen. Then Jesus will give you eternal life if you eat this, uh, the spiritual bread today. And today I want eternal life. I don't know about you. I'm at a point in my life. I just want to love. I want to I want to be uh, loved. I want to relax and be in peace. I don't have time for foolishness anymore. Amen. Amen. The Lord is coming soon today. And many of us get so caught up at what we see around us that, you know, we feel like this is the this is this is, this is what God is expecting of us. But I want to simply encourage you this morning. Come on back to God. Sometimes we think a person is in the church, amen, and going out, need to come by. But folk who claim to be in the church, you need to come back to God. And only you can make that decision. Amen. Only you have to say, listen, I've drifted a little bit. First of all, understand, I've drifted a little bit. I've got involved. I'm on my, I'm on my cell phone too much now. I'm on TikTok too much. I'm on do other things too much. I'm doing other stuff too much. That, that, that's not bringing anything to my soul. And I believe God is, is, a, is trying to get us through this period of pandemic to understand, to really realize we've got to really trust him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Many of the Jews had a hard time understanding Jesus when he spoke truth. In the 51st verse of St. John, chapter 6, he says that, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh. Now, they were looking at natural bread. They could not understand that the flesh that Jesus was talking about was his body was going to be given for the sins of many. And he also says, I will give you light. I shall give for the life of the world. His flesh was given for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to quarrel among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 
Then Jesus said unto them, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless you eat my flesh, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life. And when we come to communion, we talk about that from time to time, that the, 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 the wine and the bread is just a symbol. But if you don't understand that you're eating his body and, and, and drinking his blood, you realize that you won't have life. This is why we must understand today we got to be on the Lord's side. We got to understand that Jesus came and gave his life for our sins. And he gave his life so that we might have life everlasting. And he talks about on in this same chapter, we won't go through each verse, but he said the bread which came down from heaven was not your father's who ate the manna that was brought down in the, in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness. He said that this bread I'm giving you, you shall never hunger again. And this water that I give you, you shall never thirst again. God's word shows us, amen, that there is life in the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. And we must understand to be on the Lord's side, you have to make these uh, assessments in your life. Do I serve Satan, or do I serve the Lord? Let me give you some reasons why I think we ought to serve the Lord. First of all, simply put, he's been good. He's been good to us. Do I have a witness out there? Amen. Secondly, he has healed you on many occasions. Thirdly, he is healing us. Amen. Every day he is providing us. Every time you can take a breath on your own, that's a blessing. Can I get a witness here today? And we should not be so captivated by what Satan brings along to us to realize we're on the Lord's side. We will always be victorious when we are on the Lord's side. In this text, God's word shows us the fatal mistake that many make in verse 59 of St. John. These things he said in verse 59, he says in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. What hard saying? I got to eat your flesh, Jesus? I got to drink your blood? They said it was a hard saying. Amen. And it was hard who to understand. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured against this, he said unto them, does this offend you? What then if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit, listen, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. That's what I want to let you know today. To be on the Lord's side, you got to understand the words that Jesus spoke in the Bible. They are spirit. They are not of any private interpretation from any man, but come straight from God Almighty. What you saying, preacher? I'm saying this morning that, that today, God forbid, that we should ever go back from following the Lord. Amen. It would be a, a sad thing. I just can't imagine. You know, I hope I don't go back on the Lord. But I could imagine, amen, going back on the Lord. Where would I go? Amen. What, what could I do? Amen. No, after knowing Jesus Christ and the pardon of my sin, and I go back in the world and do start doing things in the world, I don't know if I'd be as comfortable as I am right now where I'm standing, knowing I'm under the power of the Holy Spirit and I'm under his covering. Are you under his covering this morning? And today, God forbid that we should go back. But this also means that we shouldn't want to go back from the Lord. Now, I want to say something briefly about the church. We, can, we cannot be good saints and good Christians without actively being involved in the Lord's church. And the reason why, because God designed the church and the believer to be inside the church. Now, the church is not the building, but the church is the body, the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 and 22 is a great place to see this truth. When Paul wrote these words, he said, Now, therefore, ye are no longer strangers and foreigners, 
but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You in the church today, you are not a foreigner. Thank you, Jesus. You are fellow citizens, and we are dwelling together. That means we are together by the power of God. And this, this church, not this physical building, but this church has been built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitly joined together, grows into a holy temple to the Lord. And this is why we need to come on back and stop drifting. The church, individuals, people make up the church. This building here is just a place where we come and worship. Amen. We don't worship the building. But we come as his people to worship a great God. We got to understand, even in this task that we are going through right now, we cannot afford to stray away. It's just like a sheep. It means sheep are passive animals. They will stray away. They can see the wolf getting ready to eat them. But they're so passive, they will allow him to eat them. But you ought to thank God for the, the shepherd. God is our good shepherd. When he sees the sheep going away, he goes out and rescues them. And sometimes he has to break the sheep's legs in order for them to stay in the fold. And sometimes God got to break you to make you. Sometimes our wills sometimes are so strong that God can't just do what he wants to with us. So sometimes he has to break our will. Sometimes he has to send things in our life to let us know we got to trust him wholly and, and, and all, with all our heart and mind. We got to just stand with him because there's some things you cannot work out. There were some things I faced in my own life. I've had to realize with my help, I can't do it. But I have to trust the Lord. And today, this building is built together and jointly fitted in whom you also, in verse 22, is built together for inhabitation of God in the spirit. The church, the body of a believer, should be inhabitation of the spirit of God. So when we do come back to the house of the Lord, when we do come back together, his spirit should be reigning in all of our hearts. And when we come in here, we will come in with a different attitude. I think sometimes we have, we, we have just kind of been going along to church and we just follow a, a, a plan or a system. And I think that's hurt us more than anything else. We've got to learn to worship God. I'm reading a book about worshiping God. And worshiping God is not the piano and the organ. But worship is coming into a relationship with God and knowing that he is hearing you. Amen. We, we, we got so cut up, we got to have this. Now we have this, and now we have that. We're going to have this. But when we come to the house of the Lord as a fitly joined together individuals, we will know the presence of God is here because it should already be in us. It's not hard to come to church and praise God if the spirit is already in you. You don't need the praise team, amen, God bless you, to worship God. But when you woke up this morning, you were brushing your teeth, looking in the, you could praise and worship the God. Amen. And so as a body of believers, all of us worshiping God together, when we do come back in the physical building, we are already fitly joined together. And I say unto you this morning, the church, we are the household of God. We are in his household, and we are supposed to be together. Can I get a witness here? Too many factions in the church. There's a group over here saying one thing. There's a group over here saying one thing. There's a group back here saying something else. Amen. What you saying not going to bring unity. It's you understanding that I'm on the Lord's side. Can I get a witness here? I'm on his side. I am worshiping him. Too many, too often times, we worship people. We worship things. But we don't worship God. Amen? 
Can I get a witness out there? We, we worship, amen, uh, men and women. But, you know, that's the wrong person to be worshiping. You ought to be worshiping God because we are household fitly framed together. The book of Ephesians, quickly, he will say unto us, chapter 2, verse 21, Paul said to, that Christians are a building being joined together by God. The household of faith is joined together by God. Not because I'm your, your friend. Not because you're my friend. Not because every once in a while we get together and we chat. Amen. But God is holding us together. And when we are whole together, as uh, Paul says, we are growing into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you also are being built together for inhabitation of God in the spirit. The church has to be an habitation of God in the spirit. So when people come, they know they are in the presence of the Lord. When they come to the church, they won't be dealing with your ism, your schism, or what you think, or what you don't think. The, the, the church has to be, if you're on the large side, you have to provide a place with a man out there who don't know God. He already bad already. He's already cussing and fussing. He don't need to come into church and find cussing and fussing. He should come in and find love. He should come in and find people who were once like he was. And I think sometimes the church, we forget that we used to smoke. We used to drink. We used to run. Run, run around. Amen. Truth be known. You ought to thank God. God don't roll our scroll back over that screen. So we done done some stuff. Amen. That you don't want to even think about. Amen. You talk idle. You put run people down. Amen. When that, when that sinner comes to the house of God, he don't need to see how holy you are. He ought to see the power of God working through you, a person who has been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anybody in this morning know you've been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit and by your belief in the word of God. Amen. Amen. We don't have nothing to brag about. If it had, the song says God's grace. God had not shown us grace. We will probably be in somebody's cemetery, not knowing the power of repentance in our lives. Amen. So I want to say to you that we are a building joined together by God. And God has always planned for his church to gather together. And that's why in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25, he said, Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Amen. We ought to do what we can to stir each other for love. Amen. I, mean, I know this might be a little different this morning, but you got to stop this talking, idle talking, stuff you don't know about. Amen. You gotta, and stop asking me about what I know or don't know. Amen. We must understand that we ought to provoke one another to love and good works. Like I said, I just ain't got time for no more foolishness. Amen. We don't know when death is around the corner. Amen. And we, we worrying about who shot John or why we doing this and why we doing that. Let me tell you something. You need to sweep around your own front door, around your back door, and go down your chimney if you have a chimney and sweep it out because God is saying today he needs the church to be on the right side. And the way to be on the right side is we got to clean up some stuff. Just because you hadn't been in the church doesn't mean God doesn't see you. Amen. Just because we're not in the building that God don't know what you're thinking. He says he knows your very intent of your heart before you even do what you do. You, you know, sometimes we come to church and he already knows you ain't going to say amen. 
He already know you're just going to come here and get a little salve, get a little song, and get in your car, and then take off. Amen. But God today is saying that we should provoke one another to stir up love and good works. And he says, forsaking, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exalting one another. This is what I want to say being on the Lord's side does. Every day when you talk to your brothers, say, exalt them, one another. Amen. And so that much more as we see the day approach, rather than talking about who shot John, how about encourage one another? Let's hold on. Let's stand together. Amen. Let's stand on the word. Amen. Rather than trying to figure out who doing what and who not doing what, spend a little time exhorting one another. When you're finished talking, you ought to tell them, say, I want to tell you this right now. I want you to hold on. And when you, if you see each other, just hold each other's hand and say, listen, I, I hadn't talked to you in a few days, but I want you to hold on. Yeah. Amen. You've got to understand that the devil is out to destroy every last one of us. He doesn't care a hoot about none of us. Yeah. But we are the people of God need to stand fast. Stop giving God these rolling your eyes at God. Change these attitudes. Change these attitudes. We got to be together. I ain't talking about no church building. I ain't talking about no organization. I'm talking about the very fiber what God put the church here for. We have a sign out to say what our name is, but that's not the church. Amen. The church is the believers that believe in what God's saying. Amen. We should not forsake one of us, the assembly of, us, of ourselves. We can't come together right now because of this virus. But that doesn't give us a, a, a license to fade away. Amen. Amen. That doesn't say you ought to call your best friend and say, did you hear the message this morning? We got to stay together. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank the Lord. We shouldn't go back from following God. We shouldn't back away from his church. Let me close. To be on the Lord's side, we must not go back from Jesus. We should not betray Jesus. God forbid that we would betray the God that's delivered us from sin. Amen. Now, he knew, he knew Judas was going to betray him. He knew. He said, all of you here, I didn't choose you, but there's one here going to betray me. Don't betray the Lord Jesus. Don't go back on him. Amen. If Jesus wanted to, he could have stopped Judas at any time. Amen. And Judas was a betrayer. And he's not one, the only one. Judas was a betrayer. But he's not the only one in the church. Many people betray God. Amen. For other things in the world. But if God has done anything for you, anything noticeably in your life, even through this pandemic, should be a reason not to go back on him. It should be a reason to lift up your hands and say, thank you, Lord. It should be a reason to say, I'm telling you what, I may have drifted. Confession is good for the soul. Yes, I have drifted. Yes, I have. I have drifted. I don't pray. I don't fast. I just wonder sometimes how many of the saints of God are still fasting. How many of them are still praying? Do you wait for the midnight cry or do you just decide to get on your night leaves at 10 o'clock at night and pray? If you're going to the Lord's side, you can't betray what God has, has, has helped to bring you to. You cannot forget where God has brought you from. Amen. And I want to say this to you too. That Pastor Peter warned us about this in his second letter to God's church and Peter closed out chapter 1 by stressing the value of God's word. And he said these words. We also have the prophetic word made more sure, which you do well to heed as a light that shine in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy 
never came by the will of man. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. There are people in the world today who are false prophets. Amen. False teachers. Sometimes right among us. And secretly bring in destructive heresies. Even denying the Lord who brought them. And bring us together. Amen. You got to be careful. Even people you talk to when they're talking about the word, what they don't believe. Thank you, Jesus. God is announcing a warning. If you're on the Lord's side, you got to understand what you think about God's word is only what you think. The Bible tells us today that the Bible was not of any private interpretation, but men spoke and wrote by the move of the Holy Spirit. Deacon Hamilton would always say, who is on the Lord's side? Amen. Whose side you leaning on? I want to close right there and say, whose side are you leaning on? Are you leaning on your side? But he would say, the Lord's side, the Lord's side, leaning on the side hey, uh, of the Lord. And I, I say this morning, this, this message is not designed to rebuke or send, cast, or snare, but it, I, I feel it. Many of us have just drifted away from God, been saved a long time, and we drifted. And you hear this today. Now, the question is, what you going to do about it? You're going you gonna to come back next Sunday and still be the same way you were today? But will you say to yourself today, I'm going to challenge myself to stay on the Lord's side. I'm going to challenge myself before I can help somebody else. I... I, say it with me, I, I have to make a change. Amen. To be on the Lord's side, we must not betray the Lord Jesus. By the grace of God, we can say that we are truly believing what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has said unto you. And we are people who believe and truly have eaten this spiritual bread. Whose side are you leading on this morning? Whose side? Will you stay on? Today, if there's somebody who want to get on the side of the Lord, you must repent of your sins. Acts 2.38, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is not Elder Smith's doctrine. This is not what he thinks, but it's come out of the Holy Bible that Jesus is saying for us to do. If you want to be saved today, you can come. There's one, one way to God. Oh, glad is one, one. is coming soon and he's coming for a people who are ready to meet him let this message today challenge you to stay on the Lord's side don't allow Satan to cause you to drift away don't allow Satan amen to create in you a nonchalant attitude when it comes to the people of God being together. Challenge yourself to, pro to provoke love and good works among each other. Let that be your challenge this week when you talk to one another. Say, let's work together in the will of the Lord. Let's stay close to the fire. One day God is coming soon. As I was reading this week, 
Bible says that when you see these things come, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, fires, unstable weather, know that your redemption draweth nigh. So we don't have a whole lot of time to waste. All of our efforts should be placed on seeing Jesus. I love all of you with the love of Christ. But I cannot allow myself to get drawn away and lose my own soul. So I ask you today, let this week be a week of challenge. Come on back to the Lord. Come on back to him. Sometimes you got to just turn off the cell phone. Turn off the Facebook. Turn off the TV. Spend some time in God's word. So that you can be strong in Jesus' name. God bless you today. Thank you all of you who have joined us this morning. It's now offering time. If you desire to contribute to our ministry, they are on the screen at this time. You can bless us in this ministry. We know God will also bless you. Those of you who still have your envelopes, we ask that you uh, bring those or send your contributions to 282 Progressive Way, Denmark, South Carolina. Amen. Care of Progressive Church, 29042. And we know God will bless your giving. I want to say to you this morning that we need special prayer. Amen. For my brother David this morning, we ask you to pray for him, that God will work a miracle in his life. Also, we are praying for our school district, all of our school districts, Blackville, Barnwell, Allendale. Bamberg, and especially right now in Orangeburg, where we had a, almost a fatal shooting. Uh, I thank the Lord today. It could have been a lot worse than it was. Amen. Amen. I don't know what's, but I do know what it is. Satan is using everything he can to destroy people. Amen. So please tell your children, amen, as they go out, stay away from people. And also, if they see something that's not right, make sure you go to an adult. Yes. Go to your principal or your teacher. Yes, uh, uh, this uh, this could have been avoided, amen, if someone had just spoken up. Jesus. Now, I know young people don't like to be snitches, but I think I'd rather be a snitch and be a liar yes. and tell something than be a snitch and stay, say nothing and be dead. So I want you to talk with your children. Please talk with them. Let them know, amen, God is our protector. He is our deliverer. But we need to use wise common sense. And lastly, I can't say enough about the COVID virus. We're asking prayer today for the Reverend Jesse Jackson and his wife, who both had the vaccinations, both of them, but they still got caught the virus. And they're in the hospital in Chicago. So we ask that you remember them in prayer. Amen. Amen. And remember all of us, uh, those who are in our hospitals, we don't talk enough about our nurses and our doctors. They are overwhelmed. Yes, Lord. They are really overwhelmed. I see pictures on TV and, and on my computer where many of them just get in a little corner and just try to relax a minute. Amen. There are places where there are no more I see you beds. Amen. There are people just hanging out in the hallway. And I think I'm so, why are you saying all that, Pastor? I said, we got so many reasons to rejoice. Amen. Come on, let's rejoice right now. That we are not on a respirator this morning. And that we ought to just keep our hearts and minds on the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, you are better prepared for this virus if you get your shot. Then I want to say this lastly. You, 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 you can't go out in crowds no more. We like to go to funerals and like to hug people. That's just impossible. If you want to protect yourself, you got to use wise, be wise. Amen. And I'm imploring you, y'all. I'm just, you know, you, you, you have your own mind about things. 
and you want to do things your way. But I'm saying this, this virus is still in existence. And all, all they are asking us is to wear your mask, That's right. socially distance, amen, and we can mitigate some of this problem. That's all. They're not asking you to jump off the roof and have so much faith you jump off the steeple and the angels will lift you up. God ain't asking us for that. He's just asking you to just use some wise common sense. Amen. 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 So praise, pray for all our educators, our bus drivers. Amen. And if you want to work, there are plenty of jobs open. Amen. Amen. They're ready to work. If if you want to work, there are plenty of jobs for us in Jesus' name. Now, again, thank God for all of you. And again, those of you who are watching us, May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord be gracious unto you in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Facebook Live, Progressive Church, our Bible study. God bless you. Lord bless you. Favor. May his favor.